أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبينوا أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين صدق الله العظيم The Physical Attributes of Al-Mahdi One must understand that there is a grave distinction between fact and fiction regarding the Mahdi and a simple Google search can attest to this statement. When Imam Mahdi is Googled, the results show a romanticized being exhibited in a grandiose fashion, generally a six-foot built man with a mighty beard clad in green armor or robes with a sharp curved sword exhibiting beams of light around his head whilst riding his noble white steed. This type of understanding of an awaited figure is no stranger in Islam, and similar circumstances can be examined from the stories of the past. Take the story of Talut, or King Saul in the Old Testament, a simple working man whom Allah appointed as king for the children of Israel, who at that time were eagerly yearning for a new king. However, Unimpressed by his personal CV, many Jews rejected his kingship due to his status and wealth. But Allah gives authority to whomever He desires. In Surah Al-Baqarah, the Kaf, verse 247, Allah says, Their Prophet told them, Allah has appointed Saul to be your king. They protested, How can he be our king when some of us are more deserving of kingship than he and he has not been blessed with vast riches? He replied, Allah has chosen him over you and blessed him with knowledge and stature. Allah grants kingship to whomever he wills, and Allah is all bountiful, all knowing. As a result of these predisposed notions, many were reluctant to follow Talut and ignored his commands and were dismissed and even abandoned the war campaign against the army of Jalut. In this, Allah tested the resolve of the believers who supported him, and as a result, they were granted victory because of their faith in Allah and not their previously held beliefs. Although all the evidence and proofs were evident, only a handful believed. Another example can be correlated from the story of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. During the time of the Roman supremacy over the Holy Land, there was a prophecy regarding the coming of a Messiah or Moshiach who would free the children of Israel of foreign domination. When Allah sent Isa alayhi salam as a messiah, the rabbis rejected him due to the simple fact that they were looking for a warrior king figure who would wage war against the Romans and establish an eternal Jewish kingdom in the Holy Land as the preeminent nation of the world. But because he was a humble carpenter and not from a lineage of kings and did not fit the persona of the leader they envisioned, he was rejected. Despite performing miracles by the will of Allah, the rabbis betrayed him, rejected him, and abandoned the man who was their promised Messiah. Why? They submitted to subjective beliefs rather than the objective truth. Till today, they demand from Elohim or Allah, We want we Moshiach want now. Moshiach now. We don't, we want, to don't wait. want to wait. We want Moshiach now. We want Moshiach now. on. And lastly, we can relate the story of the final messenger of God, Muhammad wasallam, The orphan prophet with no ties to kingship was rejected by many, although his arrival was prophesied as the name Ahmad. The scholars knew the truth regarding the arrival of Muhammad wasallam, being the prophesied Ahmad and had knowledge of the signs, yet they blindly ignored the facts. Why? because he was an Arab from the lineage of Ismail alayhi salam and not from among the chosen nation of Israel through Ishaq alayhi salam. On the side note, the Caliph Uthman radiallahu anhu also confirmed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's identity as Ahmad as one day while sleeping, he heard a caller call out, Sleepers, 
Arise, Ahmad has emerged in Makkah, and he later narrated this to the Prophet peace be upon him. There is nothing wrong with portraying the Mahdi in green robes. We ourselves will be doing that for the rest of the documentary. However, the core idea to understand is that there is our own subjective, generally emotional opinions, and then there is the truth. We are not comparing Mahdi to the prophets, peace be upon them. Rather, we are showing the nature of man and how their beliefs may not be the reality of what Allah has planned. Regarding the Mahdi's physical attributes, there are a few reliable hadith that are authentic. Muhammad wasallam said, The Mahdi will be of my stock and will have a broad forehead and a prominent nose. Meaning his nose will be something distinguished, it stands out and projects beyond the surface. In layman's terms, he will have a protruding nose. In the same narration, we see that sometimes, instead of prominent nose, it is written as aquiline nose, also known as a Roman nose. And instead of broad forehead, we see it written as clear or bald forehead. However, the term aqna does not mean aquiline. That word is in fact ma'quf. So why do we find some scholars that say that the Mahdi will have an aquiline nose? It is because an aquiline nose or Roman nose is an aspect of aqna being something prominent, beautiful, distinguished, protruding and has a noble component associated with it. Allah knows best. Broad forehead or clear bald forehead both entail that the Mahdi will have a receding hairline. As for the Mahdi's nose, it could be concluded that it is protruding in size and its shape could be aquiline as the picture shows but it is nonetheless something prominent and distinguished. On the side note, an aquiline nose has many different variations. These are all different pictures of an aquiline nose and Allah knows best. A hadith narrated by Ali radiallahu anhu mentions that the Mahdi will be an average looking individual and the ulema also agree that he will be a regular person initially. Finally, the Mahdi will resemble the Prophet ﷺ in manners and customs, but not appearance. This clears up any misconception that the Mahdi would be a scholarly figure or some romanticized hero riding a white steed. He will be a normal individual and will be inspired and changed in one night by the will of Allah. Allah knows best if this is the faithful knight that would earn him the title of Imam or leader. I will mention that there are some very weak hadith which mention a mark or spot on the Mahdi's cheek and even mention that the Mahdi will be slow in speech and stutter, a claim that the Qadiyani community exploited to propagate their stuttering false messiah. However, the hadith about the mark on the cheek has been classified as weak according to Ibn Kathir and Al-Haythami. The hadith about the slight stutter is found in Kitab al fitan and in the book by Imam al sayyuti titled Al-Hawi lil Fitawi, under the traditions of the Imam Mahdi, and Allah knows best. Finally, we'll address the question of what age will the Mahdi be when he emerges and what will his age be when he is appointed as Caliph. There are speculations that he will be in his 40s, but as previously mentioned in this hadith and the ones related to it were classified as weak but Allah knows best. In Kitab al fitin by Nuaym ibn Hammad, it was narrated from Qatada that Abdullah ibn al-Harith, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The Mahdi will appear when he is 40 years old, looking like a man from among the children of Israel. However, there is a narration from the Tabi'een that says, narrated from Sumaith, his name, Al-Mahdi, is the same as the name of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And he is aged 51 or 52 and rules over mankind for seven years. Another narration he said eight years. Thus, he could be appointed as Mahdi in his 50s, but emerge in his 40s and begin his work. Allah knows best. We will address what his work will be in the coming segment of the documentary. عن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال 
يا أيها الناس إن ربكم واحد ألا لا فضل لعربي على عجمي ولا لعجمي على عربي ولا لأحمر على أسود ولا لأسود على أحمر إلا بالتقوى إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم